For a moment, imagine. It is a quiet morning at Kennedy Space Center, Launch Complex 39A. The air is thick with anticipation. A steel and concrete titan stands before you, a monument to human ambition, reaching for the heavens. It is the Saturn V, the most powerful machine ever built. But it is not a single rocket. It is a three-part journey, a masterclass in engineering, designed not just to defy gravity, but to conquer it. This is the story of the Saturn V's three stages and how they worked in perfect, violent harmony to carry humanity to the moon. Our journey begins at the base with the S1C stage. This is the brute force, the earth shaker. Standing at over 42 meters tall, it was in itself a rocket larger than many countries had ever built. It was powered by five of the most powerful single chamber rocket engines ever created, the F1s. Each of these engines could produce over 1.5 million pounds of thrust. That's enough power to lift a fully loaded aircraft carrier. The F-1 engine wasn't just powerful. It was a technical marvel. It burned RP-1, a highly refined form of kerosene and liquid oxygen. At ignition, these fuels surged into the combustion chamber, creating a controlled explosion that generated unimaginable power. Together, the five F-1 engines on the S-1C produced a staggering 7.6 million pounds of thrust at launch. For a mere two minutes and 42 seconds, this incredible power fought against Earth's gravitational pull. By the time it had expended its fuel, the Saturn V was already 61 kilometers high and traveling at over 9,000 kilometers per hour. The job of the S-1C was complete. With a precise series of small explosive charges, it separated from the rest of the rocket and tumbled back to the Atlantic Ocean. Its mission accomplished.
we enter the second phase of the journey, the S2 stage. This is the workhorse of the launch, the stage that takes the rocket from the upper atmosphere all the way to a parking orbit around Earth. The S2 was powered by five J2 engines. Unlike the S1C's kerosene and liquid oxygen, the J2s used a different, more powerful fuel, liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen. These cryogenic fuels are much colder and more energetic, but also more complex to handle. The use of liquid hydrogen was a revolutionary step. It provided a massive increase in efficiency, but it required an incredible amount of insulation and engineering to keep it from boiling off. These five J2 engines generated over one million pounds of thrust, pushing the rocket higher and faster. For about six and a half minutes, the S2 burned its fuel, carrying the rocket to an altitude of 185 kilometers. By the time it was done, the rocket was traveling at a staggering 28,000 kilometers per hour. The S2 then separated, dropping back into the atmosphere and burning up in a fiery descent, its crucial role complete. We now come to the final act of this incredible ballet of fire and physics the S-4B stage. This is the stage of precision, of delicate power. Its job was not just to push the rocket, but to guide it. The S-4B was powered by a single, but equally powerful, J-2 engine. Just like the S-2, it used liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen. But the real magic of the S-4B was its ability to reignite. The engine would fire for just over two minutes to push the rocket into a stable parking orbit around Earth. This allowed the crew to perform systems checks and prepare for the next crucial maneuver. After the checks were complete, the S-4B's single J-2 engine would fire a second time. This was the translunar injection burn, a three to five minute burst of power that pushed the spacecraft out of Earth's orbit and onto a precise trajectory towards the moon. It was this burn that transformed a journey around Earth into a voyage through the void of space. Apollo 8, Houston. Go ahead, Houston. Apollo 8, you are go for TLI. Hold it. I understand. We're go for TLI. Go. Finally, with the spacecraft on its way to the moon, the S-4B would separate. It was then jettisoned on a trajectory into deep space, a ghost of the launch, its ultimate purpose fulfilled. The Saturn V was a three-part machine, a symphony of fire, fuel, and brilliant engineering. Each stage, a mission unto itself, a perfectly choreographed dance of power and precision. The S1C, with its brute force, the S2, with its efficient power, and the S4B, with its final delicate push. It was the sum of these parts, the flawless execution of this three-stage journey, 
that did not just propel a rocket, but an entire generation's dreams. It was how we stood on the shoulders of giants and reached for the moon. And in doing so, forever changed our view of the heavens and of ourselves.